Earthquakes shake up groundwater systems and liquefaction takes place. This has happened in the uh, in a great extent in the Japan 2011 earthquake, but we've also heard that it happened with the Hebgen Yellowstone earthquake of 1959, that it shook the waters in the wells in Hawaii over 2,000 miles away. How is that possible? It must be that some kind of a plate tectonics or magma body somehow is joined from Yellowstone to Hawaii. Or perhaps it's because that earthquake in Yellowstone made the bell ring like a bell, the earth ring like a bell. Something happened between Yellowstone and Hawaii to make the waters in the wells in Hawaii shake and decrease. Uh, this is from uh, Earth and Space Science News EOS. Earthquakes shake up groundwater systems. Increased permeability temporarily boosts water flow. Okay, so this is what is expected to take place on the west coast. Recently, the geologists warned the officials, the developers, the engineers in Portland and concerning the whole of the west coast that the sediment under the high-rise buildings is not as sturdy as they believed it was and that's why they called a meeting between all the officials and they wanted to change the building code in order to retrofit all existing buildings that were not up to code because they do expect a mega thrust, thrust earthquake and most of these high-rise buildings will not be able to stand not even seven magnitude Richter let alone eight and a half or nine, God forbid. Well, they closed that meeting, uh, the uh, developers and the engineers, and of course the government officials were totally shocked because everybody realized that they had to put in a lot of money, billions, tens of billions of dollars to fix up these buildings if they could be fixed up properly uh, so that they could withstand major earthquakes. And what they did was they postponed changing the building code until they could, they could figure out what to do because they in no way wanted to lay out the cash. It's greed, you see. It's also perhaps not feasible for a lot of companies. They don't have the cash to do that. And this was in uh, this uh, seminar, this meeting uh, took place, I think, if I remember correctly, in April of this year. And in July, the beginning of July, July 4th and 5th, we had the Ridgecrest earthquakes. And there you go. So uh, the building code has not been changed. The good thing is that University of California has announced today, uh, the dean there is a woman and she made an announcement that they will be uh, retrofitting all their buildings that need retrofitting. They will have an inventory of fit buildings to withstand major earthquakes. And uh, they made that announcement and they will of course be laying out a lot of money to do that to uh, save lives of their students in case of a major earthquake. Now, how long is it going to take them to do that? God only knows. Um, now we're going into this article. Okay, what I wanted to, to tell you was that um, uh, in the big earthquakes of, of uh, California, they, they did have liquefaction. People were going around in boats. They were going around in boats. Um, because it's a valley, the area between San, Francisco, um, San Andreas and the Walker Lane Fault System, if you see, that's a very big depression. Basically, that's a valley. Um, they do have problems there. That is a very soft area, and they expect that a lot of the areas on the West Coast will turn to liquefaction in a major earthquake. Now, to this, increased permeability temporarily boosts water flow. This is by Mary Caperton Morton. It's uh, Creative Commons. And uh, the authors, we cite them. Citation Morton MC, 2019. Earthquakes Shake Up Groundwater System EOS 100, published August 13, 2019. After an earthquake, regional stream flows will sometimes increase because of an influx of groundwater being released from aquifers. 
This phenomenon is well documented, but the details of the underlying mechanisms remain somewhat mysterious. A new study looking at the effect of the Japan 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan on groundwater systems in China. Okay, the Japan quake had an effect on the ground systems in China, just like the Yellowstone quake had effects on the groundwater systems in Hawaii, which is much further than Japan is from China. Okay, so the Japan quake had effects on the groundwater system in China, is shedding some light on how Earth's subsurface can be affected by large earthquakes. Groundwater systems often comprise layers of permeable rock called aquifers, separated by low permeability layers called aquitards, A-Q-U-I-T-A-R-D-S, aquitards. Previous studies have analyzed the effects of earthquakes on either aquifers or aquitards, but to date, nobody has quantified the effects of earthquakes on both aquifers and aquitards in the same groundwater system said Zhen Ming Shi, a hydrologist at the China University of Geosciences in Beijing and an author of the new study published in May in Water Resources Research. Quote, the commonly used tidal response models can only identify either aquifer or aquitard permeability, but not both at the same time, she said. She and colleagues took a different approach combining a traditional tidal response model with an analysis of barometric pressure changes detected at a 2,600 meter deep well near the Shunyi Qianmen Yangjiang fault zone, I hope I said that properly, I don't know, one of the largest fault systems in Beijing, by the way. Scientists have been monitoring subsurface changes in this well, drilled into the aquifer in porous limestone that is capped by layers of impermeable mudstone sandstone and andesite for decades as part of the country's extensive earthquake monitoring program. By comparing barometric pressure rec recorded four months before the March 11, 2011 Japan Hokoku quake with data collected up to a year after the event, they found that the earthquake boosted the permeability of the aquifer by a factor of six. It made it six times more permeable whereas the permeability of the aquitard doubled. As far as I know, he says, this is the first time that changes in both the aquifer and an accompanying aquitard have been quantified after an earthquake. This is what Michael Manga said, planetary scientist at the University of California in Berkeley. First time changes in both aquifer and an accompanying aquitard have been quantified after earthquake. Uh, so um, Michael Manga, uh, UC Berkeley, who was not involved in new study, but who co-authored a commentary about the study's findings in June in Water Resources Research, along with Steve Inge Britson, hydrologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. Manga said, permeability is not usually thought of as a quantity that can change over time. When you drill a well, you measure the rate of flow, and then that's the number you use to describe the productivity of that well. But during an earthquake, Subsurface pressure changes, and new fracture networks and shifting gases and fluids can open new pathways for groundwater movement. The new study also demonstrates that these subsurface shifts are not permanent, as the area settled after the Tohoku event, detectable changes in the well return to pre-seismic levels in about four months, she and his colleagues wrote. Quote, this is a very clever study that's adding a lot to this discussion of how permeability can change in space and time, Ingebrigtsen said. I think there's growing interest in this area, in this idea, that permeability is a mutable property. I'd like to see more of these kinds of studies done in other wells in other geological settings. End quote. The work may have implications for groundwater quality after an earthquake, she said. Increases in the aquitard's permeability may allow p pollutants to find their way into the groundwater supplies. God forbid, can you imagine? The aquitard is a good indicator of the aquifer's vulnerability to pollution, she said. If an earthquake causes changes in permeability in the aquitard, groundwater may move upward or downward 
thus increasing the risk of groundwater contamination. This is by Mary Copperton Morton, science writer, and the Blonde Coyote, at the Blonde Coyote, and it's uh, Creative Commons 3, and uh, we did cite her as we should have. And this is on EOS, Earth and Space Science News, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Very interesting. So that's why the uh, Yellowstone earthquake had an effect on the water wells in Hawaii over 2,000 miles away. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.